Welcome to this short introduction to Qt 3D. My name is Giuseppe D'Angelo. I am a senior software engineer at KDAB, where I work on a number of software projects uh, as a developer, as a project manager. I am also one of KDAB's trainers. And today I would like to tell you a little story about this new technology that we have developed and added into Qt. Q3D allows you to easily add 3D content into traditional 2D user interfaces. So, what is Q3D in the first place? Q3D is a new Qt module. It's fairly new. We at KDAB have worked on it in the last few years. It's a module that allows you to easily create a 3D scene, visualize it in your application and interact with it. At its core, Q3D is actually more generic than just 3D. When designing it, we took inspiration from modern game engine architectures. So we decided to build what is uh, actually a soft real-time simulation engine, which is, yes, able to display a scene, a 3D scene at 60 frames per second, uh, but it also is more generic than that. Uh, this allows us in the future to extend it with uh, further capabilities, such as physics simulation or audio simulation, and also allow application developers to add their own domain-specific aspects into this simulation engine. Q3D was designed to be scalable. Uh, when we design a scene in Q3D, and I'm going to show you an example in a few slides, uh, what we add in there is a very high-level description of what's inside our scene. Uh, this description is then used to generate a series of tasks, a series of jobs, and these jobs are actually run in parallel in a high efficient thread pool, which is therefore able to scale amongst all your CPUs. Q3D was also designed to be extensible in the sense that you can extend what Q3D can do. Uh, suppose that your application requires custom, custom simulation domains, uh, such as physics or audio, uh, you are able to add them into the engine and have your scene use these custom aspects. And finally, we also wanted Q3D to be flexible in the sense that we did not want to hard code any specific 3D rendering algorithm or strategy. When using Q3D, uh, you can provide a description of how your scene needs to be rendered. And this allows you to create all sorts of special effects, custom rendering passes, and so on. Now, this does not mean that you need to do all of this when you want to render something. Qt3D comes with convenience, uh, actually a lot of convenience for you to be able to quickly assemble a scene and visualize it on the screen. However, when we built that convenience, we did not take any shortcuts. Uh, if you need some custom rendering, you are able to express it inside Q3D and so visualize your scene in a unique way and really bring your application to the next level. And uh, from an API point of view, Q3D comes with both C++ and QML APIs, so you can choose to use either or both, depending on your application needs. The two sets of APIs are identical, they literally mirror each other, so there is nothing that uh, you can do in C++ that you cannot do in QML and vice versa. So for this reason, and in order to keep the code simple, I'm going to show you a QML example, but trust me when I tell you that uh, the very same code can also be translated to C++ and used in C++. So why does Qt 3D exist? What are its benefits? Doesn't Qt already come with the OpenGL integration? Well, that's true. Qt has always had a very, a very good level of integration with OpenGL. However, if you ever wrote OpenGL code manually, uh, you would know that low-level OpenGL code is extremely tedious and error prone to write. Uh, OpenGL is a C API, it doesn't do much memory management for you, it doesn't do object management for you, so you will need to start abstracting away of open, from raw OpenGL APIs quite soon in your application development. Also, it's not trivial to actually extract good performances out of OpenGL. Uh, as soon as you want all of this, you will basically start inventing a scene graph and ultimately you will start laying down the foundations of what is Q3D now. Another major benefit of Q3D is its deep integration uh, with Qt and Qt Quick, 
that is the technologies that you are going to use to build the rest of your user interface. Yes, there is already a number of uh, off-the-shelf 3D engines that you can use in combination with Qt or Qt Quick. Uh, the problem, however, with those engines is that uh, typically they are black boxes. Uh, you will spend uh, uh, some significant amount of time to perform a first-class integration with between the engine and your Qt application. And also, you will find yourself typically in a situation uh, where you will need to uh, translate data at runtime in order to feed this data into the 3D engine and possibly do the opposite transformation back to read data out of the engine. So obviously, we did not want that. Uh, that's why we decided, OK, this engine needs to go inside of Qt because we want this first class integration with it. Also, another reason for not choosing a off-the-shelf 3D engine was that these engines typically don't work very well on embedded hardware, on, on constrained resources anyhow. Qt in general is able to target uh, a wide range of hardware going from uh, low-end embedded up to high-end workstations, and we wanted Q3D to do the same. A traditional 3D engine uh, usually targets only one of these two segments, but not both at the same time. So all in all, uh, once you get rid of the uh, low-level OpenGL code and you achieve a deep integration with Qt, what you can really do is start focusing on innovation, start focusing on what makes your application great, uh, rather than spending time debugging issues, memory leaks, and whatnot. And for that, let me give you a couple of use cases, that is, places where we're using Q3D. So, uh, we have been using Q3D in order to build uh, scientific or medical visualizations. Uh, that's pretty obvious, since typically these visualizations have some 3D component, some 3D structure that you need to visualize, you need to interact with. We have also been using Q3D in uh, automotive in the infotainment systems that you can find in any modern car. And also, uh, we have been using Q3D for machine status displays or interactive manuals. The idea is to immediately visualize what part of the machine the operator needs to act upon, or if there is a fault in the machine, what is the fault, and what are the steps that the operator needs to do in order to solve it. Having a visual representation uh, as a 3D model is much, much more effective than having a hard copy of a checklist. Also, we have been using Q3D in uh, games, video games, and augmented reality. And of course, the list could go on. Uh, it's really up to your imagination to find new use cases for 3D content these days. So let me show you one of these use cases. What I'm going to show you now is a screencast. It's a recorded video out of uh, an embedded device used for automotive infotainment. And this shows really uh, that adding 3D content into what's a otherwise ordinary 2D application really brings your application uh, to the next level. So let me start it. Uh, what you're looking at right now is a traditional, if you want, 2D application uh, built using Kit Quick. It's a touch application. You can activate buttons and do various things. and even in these kind of applications, adding 3D content uh, really delivers a lot of, of important information to the user in a immediate and natural way. So in this example, it is immediately clear that uh, there is a problem at the front right tire. Uh, the user needs to seek assistance, perhaps inflate that tire a little more. And anyhow, all of this is made possible uh, by the simple addition of 3D content into the scene. Also, this is an example of showing uh, what is a custom rendering of the 3D scene. Uh, not only the car, uh, the ground are rendered with uh, PBR shaders with nice reflections, uh, but the tires are rendered using uh, a bloom effect and a different color, as you can see, uh, depending on the status of the tire. So we can really customize all the rendering that Q3D can do, depending on what our artists uh, tell us to do. Now let me show you an example of how we create a scene in uh, Qt3D. Qt3D was built around a particular design pattern 
which is called an entity component system. Uh, in this system, uh, what we have is that the elements in the scene, the objects in the scene, are represented by entities, and each entity aggregates components. Uh, a component is basically uh, uh, one distinct quality of a given entity. For instance, we got a component describing a transformational entity, so what is its position in the world. Uh, we got a component describing the 3D, the 3D geometry of an entity. So what's the geometry that we need to render? Uh, we got a component that describes a material for an entity. That is, how do we render the geometry? This particular aggregation system allows us to extend what an entity can do uh, by simply attaching or removing uh, components at runtime. So, for instance, if we got an entity that takes part in a audio or physics simulation, uh, we can add more components to it at runtime, and therefore then our entity will uh, emit audio or perhaps bounce when it's launching our 3D scene and so on. This entity component system is basically translated directly into code. So this is an example of QML. Uh, it's exactly the same as C++, and in QML what we do is that we create an entity, we create a few components for it, and we aggregate those components in the components property of the entity. This particular entity has three components. It has a material, which is a Fong material, performs Fong shading. It has a transformation that perhaps rotates the entity along some axis. Uh, and it has some 3D geometry, uh, which is loaded by, uh, from a file on disk. So it has a mesh that comes out of an OBJ file. And let me run this code. So let me open Creator and see this code in action. So here we go. This is a very similar example. Uh, I've got an entity. I give it a name, Donut. Uh, and this entity aggregates a few components. Uh, a torus mesh, a material that does normal diffuse specular mapping, and a transformation. And this is basically the foundation of a 3D scene. Once I've got this in place, uh, I can run this demo, and this is what appears on the screen. Now, Q3D also allows you to integrate the 3D content with uh, uh, Qt Quick. So I can also add something around my 3D scene, such as this side menu. Uh, as you can see, now I've got a 3D torus, which is nicely, text nicely textured with this pattern. Uh, it is performing uh, normal mapping. I, I can very easily uh, change the, the pattern on top of it by selecting it from the menu of my application. Also, of course, uh, I would need uh, a camera inside my scene, which is represented by this camera entity, and uh, my orbit camera controller, which is a particular controller for my camera. I want this camera to orbit around uh, a center and have certain speed when I rotate it. And that's exactly what this example is doing. You can easily build on top of this example and make a more complex, more compelling one. And let me show something like that. Here we go. So this is a demo of a 3D car. The car itself, the ground, is all rendered using Q3D. Uh, on top of that, I've added a 2D interface designed using Qt Quick because it's good to build 2D interfaces. Uh, and this interface allows us to have a few controls for what we can do with the 3D model. For instance, I can uh, open the doors of my 3D car open the hood, and I actually can turn this into a fully exploded view of my car. All of this is very easy to do in, uh, in Q3D by simply adding the right entities, the right transformations, and connecting them to the, to the elements of your user interface. We can also decide to improve on this and create a custom rendering for this car. So for instance, uh, we can enable a clipping renderer 
and as you can see have a cutout of the contents of the car. All of this is possible only because we do control the rendering algorithm and therefore we're able to provide a custom rendering for the car. So what do we get uh, when we download Q3D? Uh, so what are its features right now and what are some of the features that are coming uh, soon in uh, Q5.9? In Q5.8 what we get is this very powerful entity component system uh, which you can extend to your custom domain, your custom simulations if you need to do so. We get a configurable renderer uh, which is data driven in the sense that uh, the description of what the render should render and how is provided by a piece of data inside your application. And as part of that, uh, we provide a set of convenience materials, uh, some of which are like traditional Fong shading, uh, some of which are quite advanced. For instance, we provide PBR shaders inside Q3D. Q3D has already integration with Qt Quick 2, so you are able to uh, embed inside your Qt Quick 2 application a 3D scene, which is, gets rendered by Q3D. And also, uh, Q3D features a generic input framework uh, in order to allow us to interact with the 3D scenes uh, using a keyboard, using a mouse, or perhaps using some kind of 3D joystick. Uh, all of this is totally generic and you can define your custom mapping between uh, uh, a user interaction and what should happen inside the 3D scene. And some of the features that are coming with the Qt 5.9, uh, there is a brand new animation framework uh, that allows Q3D to consume animations uh, produced by applications such as uh, Blender or Maya or 3D Studio Max. Uh, your artists can create animations in these 3D editors and export the animations and then you can play the animations back inside Q3D. Uh, we've got support for 2D text and 3D text uh, inside the scenes. So if you need to create billboards or labels uh, that are part of your 3D scene, uh, now you can easily create entities that have this text attached to them. And also there is the possibility of rendering Qt Quick 2 scenes into a texture. Uh, you can then apply this texture to any 3D content, any 3D model, uh, and have the ability of interact with the Qt Quick 2 scene uh, in a 3D environment, basically. We have also created some tooling around Q3D. Uh, the first tool that I'm showing here is Gamma Ray, which is basically the uh, Swiss army knife of Qt. Gamma Ray is able to attach itself to a running Qt application and visualize uh, some domain-specific high-level debugging information. So in this case, uh, we are visualizing the geometries inside our 3D scene, and we can debug them, we can check that uh, all the normals are pointed out correctly, uh, that the right entities are visible, and so on. We have also created a job profiler uh, that is a tool to debug the simulation which is running uh, in the Q3D's backend. The Q3D backend is, as I said, heavily threaded and as such uh, you may have bottlenecks in there that are not easy to find out or not easy to track down and you need to identify the causes of these bottlenecks. And in order to do so, uh, you can use this tool to basically visualize uh, where time is being spent and uh, what is generating these jobs. Finally, uh, we're also creating a scene editor for Q3D. This is basically an application that uh, will allow you to easily drag and drop elements inside a 3D scene, so compose a 3D scene uh, visually rather than by code. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your time and your attention today. If you want to try Q3D, uh, please go to Qt.io where you can download Qt. And Q3D is part of Qt these days, so it comes uh, with the same installer. I hope you will have the chance of uh, playing with Q3D, uh, finding it useful for your current or your next project.
Q3D comes with a lot of examples uh, showcasing both the C++ as well as the QML APIs and it comes with extensive documentation and if you've got any doubts whatsoever uh, feel free to contact us or ask a question on Qt mailing lists uh, you will find plenty of people willing to help you out thank you again and bye